Hi, I'm Peter Zosky. One afternoon, more years ago than I care to admit, my friend Sylvia Fricker, whom I knew from my days as a newspaper man in Chatham, Ontario, and Ian Tyson, who linked up with Sylvia in a folk duo, duo that was not yet famous, were visiting me in Toronto. We were going to talk about a tune that Ian had written, to which he thought I might write some words. During a pause in our progress, Ian dug into his pocket and unfolded what I remember as a sheet of lined paper. Here, he said, read this. This is by a young guy from Aurelia we think is really going somewhere. Well, Ian and Sylvia were right, it turns out. The song was Early Morning Rain. The young guy from Aurelia is with me now. Gordon Lightfoot, welcome to Zosky in Conversation. Thank you, Peter. Very they knew to be here. what they were talking Now, do you remember writing Early Morning Rain? Yes, I do. Uh, it, it was written uh, in a very brief period of time along with uh, quite a few other songs. You didn't know that that was the biggie. I felt good about it. Uh, I, uh, uh, I, it. It felt good to sing. It felt good to play. Well, now, would it have been a sheet of lined paper that Ian had in his pocket? Or have I made all that up? I just remember them. I can see it now. They were sitting on my couch, and Tyson well, reaches over and says, here. Yes, he, he, he most likely had a, had a lead sheet, which, which I, mean, I used to, I, I wrote the sheets and everything. It's for real. It, it, it's for real. <laughs> they say, how do you, you know, you, you want to, well, can you really write that stuff down? Uh, yeah, a line, a chord, and, uh, and a lyric. What were you doing then? This was the 63 or 64? Uh, were... I, I, was, uh, uh, I was back from, uh, from doing a summer television series over in Britain that I was fortunate enough to do. Yes, you were the host. Place, you were the uh, host, the glamorous host. Uh, until uh, I was limited as, a, as an announcer or, or, or compare, as they, they called it there, but I, I got to sing uh, on the show on a regular basis. So. Um, I came back from there and was and was writing songs and uh, was was hearing Bob Dylan for the first time and uh, being uh, part of the Ian and Sylvia uh, era uh, of yeah. the the folk era in Toronto. Had written quite a few songs and uh, and Early Morning Rain was one of them. Where do you write now? Uh, I I have a music uh, a music area uh, that I, I use where where I live. I, I have an office also, which is elsewhere. But I, I have a little area where I work, and uh, but as I look back through my career, I've, I've worked in all kinds of settings. But I, you I, I wrote a song about snow in the middle of a thunderstorm in, in Cleveland one one time. It just came to you, and you. It, it's just the way it works. There's a thunderstorm going on, so I'm going to write something about snow. Yeah, yeah. I was uh, in a place. I was being being allowed to to use a place to uh, to stay while I was doing a club engagement in the, uh, in Cleveland, and uh, at a certain time, wrote down and wrote this, this song, "Song for a Winter's Night." Yeah. A song about snow and and snowflakes and everything to do with winter and snow. And along came a great thunderstorm in the, the middle of all this outside the building, and it just went crazy. When you write in your office at home, is there a wicker desk? Some, is there some, you've got some rituals, don't you? Uh, the, the, the wicker desk is, uh, is upstairs. I have another desk now. It's a, it's a high one. I like to, to work standing up now. So did Hemingway. Well. I, maybe there's something to it. So do you sit there, sort of lick your pencil, and just start right? What do you do? Uh, I see. can have a melody Pussy in my... Willow's Cat. To, what do you, what? Uh, chord progression is a good place to start. Uh, a, a line of melody is a good place to start. Uh, there, you know, there, there are, are certain starting points that you can use to, to make it happen. I find it's easiest probably to get the melody and the chord progression and then try to find the, the lyric. And uh, uh, by applying words to the situation to try and find an idea that should emerge s somehow on its own. But it's just you. You're all by yourself. It's a very solitary act. Basically, yes. Is it time of day? Are you right at, in the early morning <laughs> hours? <laughs> All that almost came out rain. We're both lucky. I, I, I tried to, to do that experimentally one time. I uh, I did that about about a hundred times. Uh, very much uh, the same as you have done with the early rise, the real yeah. early rise. 
3 a.m. I know the phone doesn't ring. That's right. I'd do it right, right then and, and do it like a couple of times a week. And gradually the weeks turn into months and the months become a year. And so you're up there in your study. At, at, downstairs. I'm downstairs at that point. It's 3 a.m. And, there, and there's, there's no sound. The kids are asleep. Every, the, the house is, is quiet. Do the, the presence of the kids in, in your life, because you now you've got young children, you've got grandchildren, you got, you're a big, you're the king of the family now. Does that influence, does that influence your songwriting or your life around there? Or do you write for them, right? Uh, not, not, not particularly. I mean, I, I mean uh, like, uh, my, my, my writing is, is, is more generalized. I have written certain songs. Uh, which apply to uh, to my children, uh, such as "Fine as Fine Could Be" for my daughter Ingrid, and, and uh, there, there is, uh, you know, "Pony Man," which is is one that you can naturally uh, so, some you can naturally apply, but but specifically, uh, I know that Murray McLaughlin wrote a very nice one specifically about his. his oh, the son. old the old silver uh, star. And I admire him a great deal yeah. for for having done that. Um, but but they they influence me in other ways. They they actually make me make me work in a much more regular uh, yeah. regimen. There was a time in this fair land. God, it's it's hard to talk to you without lines <laughs> going through you. There was a time when we thought we sitting waiting and hoping thought you weren't going to record or maybe even write anymore. This is sometime in the eighties. But you is that. You certainly weren't going to record anymore at that one point. Well, it? obviously that wasn't the. You lied. That wasn't the case. I guess I lied. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. Uh, sometimes you just get like that, and uh, uh, we we had done an album, uh, 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 East of Midnight, which yeah. I really thought was a was a fine album, and uh, and I remember myself saying, if if it doesn't, uh, if it, this one doesn't sell, I'm gonna I'm gonna pack it. But that was just really. I, uh, I, I shouldn't have done that. I mean, you just, you just are not supposed to think about, it, about that unless you really mean it. And uh, all kinds of writers, of songwriters, are roaring along in their fifties and later. Some of them, many of them, friends of yours, Dylan and Neil Young and Joni Mitchell, and, and you too. You're just, just cranking them out now. Well, I'm, I'm I don't, not, that, not I don't exactly mean cranking, cranking them. No, no, but you're I'm, well. You're you're. You mean full a lot of, of lot of songs. There's a lot of oeuvre. Enough for an album. Yes. Uh, you know, and that that can take three or four years. Oh. So, you know, where, whereas it was one a year when we first started out. We got our first recording contract. It yes. was one per year. Now it's uh, it stretches out to maybe four or five years. It takes you that long to. To do it. It's just as long as you do it. That's the, the important part. You still now I got it. This is something I wanted to ask you for maybe 25 years because you're still doing it and it still pleases me. But I'm still curious about it. when you're singing. What are you looking at? Your eyes are up. You know, I'm, I'm thinking. I'm thinking real hard. I am. I'm really. I'm really thinking. Really, you don't know. I, I know that the that uh, that the people are there. I can feel the people being yeah. there, and I'm really looking at, at them. No, you're not. Your eyes are way up. You always you do that on stage and everything. It's maybe magic. It's, from, it's you. Maybe it's from looking at the looking out at that crowd, which, which is what I like to do best, really. Yeah. You don't see heaven or anything there. Eh? Uh, no, but it, but it, it it feels it feels great when it, when everything's working well. You know, when when things are, are in tune and the tempos are, are not too fast or not too slow and everything is just falling into place. Things are in tune. Yeah. God, you have you want things in tune. Yeah, it it, it, it helps a lot. But why do you play that stupid twelve string guitar for? Because it's a career to to you're not playing it now, but it's. You do sometimes play a 12 string. I tried to play a 12 string. You spend eight hours tuning it and 15 minutes playing it, right? Well, it, 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 it does. It takes some time, but after a while, you get used to it and, and, and you, you can do it faster. Because I, I can get the 12 strings in, in pretty good shape, and I've got two, two 12 strings. Yes. <laughs> which so, is even worse. <laughs> so you tune them. <laughs> 
I, I tune them both, and, and the, you, know, you tune them periodically at home in the, you know, in the music room, and then on the road there's an intensive tuning session that goes on, me, myself, and I, and the guitarist, mm -hmm. during the afternoon of, of the performance. Where does Drifters, where did that song come from? Do you know? It, it's, a, it's one of those uh, uh, autobiographical kind of songs and identifying with the, the footloose life that, uh, that some of us have and uh, uh, I guess who, who don't really appreciate, just, just like some people don't appreciate being, being connected with somebody. They're sort of caught in, in between somewhere. But your footlooseness geographically has largely been the road, the musician's road. I mean, you haven't... Well, no, that's... You roam the landscape, too, don't you? And, Have done. Yeah. As, as meaning in the, uh, some of the canoe tripping endeavors, that's a totally different uh, situation again. Mm -hmm. uh, as, as far as the, as the road goes, though, it, it, that, that's a, a kind of controlled thing. It was footloose for a lot of years, but for the last many years, it has not really been as footloose and, and, a, and a much more studious approach and uh, uh, j just a much more sound approach to it than being just a, a totally involved and, and totally immersed, uh, so to speak. Yeah. When you were a kid in Aurelia, did you want to see the world or what? Did you think, I'm too big for this town? You know, I never thought about it. No? I, I, I never thought about it real, really until I got into high school. And, and as soon as I got in high school, the music was, was there and it was already starting. And I, I never thought about much else. I, I figured the traveling would sort of take care of itself. You were quite a boy singer. I was trained. Actually, I got some, some good training as a, as a, a choir guy uh, in singing solo. and. Uh, uh, Really got interested in it really, really young, like about 10 or 11. We have a recording. This is one of the earliest light yeah. around. Do you want to hear a little bit of it? Just a little bit? This sure. Gordon Light. That's a little scratchy for, for a CD, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Gee. What else is on that record? That's a... that, that, you know, it's a sampling. There were certain songs. Uh, I, I, I sang at weddings. I, you know, I, I did all kinds of stuff like that as a kid, so. Would you stay with a, as a choir boy for a long time? Well, up, up until my voice uh, went, uh, down. <laughs> went, went down about three keys. and. Uh, you know, but there was lots of musical stuff in, the, in high school to get involved in. So. When did you first sing at Massey Hall? Because people who do their annual pilgrimage to, to, to worship you at, at Massey Hall in Toronto. We, we worship them. <laughs> oh, but it's such a great <laughs> evening. And, I, mean, and, and you, I mean, you do more, it's more than an evening and all this. They think you started like 20, 30 years. When did you start? You sang at Massey Hall when you were, what, 12? Uh, yeah, I did. I, 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 sang, uh, uh, I sang a solo there at uh, actually 12, pushing 13, uh, alone in Massey Hall. And uh, that really was the first time I ever appeared there, I guess you could, you could say so. That, uh, the next time I appeared there was perhaps uh, 18, 20 years later. Did you think about like the first time when you went back? Is, it, is that part of the attraction of Massey Hall for you? It was thrilling. The first time I played, it was a matter of the parent, you know, my parents bringing me down here and yeah. doing all that stuff. Uh, the second time, uh, <laughs> we had that? a couple of records uh, uh, that were happening, and it, and it seemed a worthwhile thing to do, and it was. It, 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 it stuck, because I, I like to play Massey Hall, because it has a sound. It has that. It's wonderful, eh? Now, you wanted to be a jazz drummer when you were a kid. How'd that work out? I did that as a means of uh, uh, making some extra, 
extra money. Yeah. That's about as far as it, uh, as it went to He can sing at your wedding. He can play your drums. <laughs> I, I, I played drums and sang just like Ringo at, uh, at one point, you know. Is that good or bad? Was, it's fine. I, yeah. I, I was working with, with, with some some good jazz guys here in town. Uh, I worked with Jack Zaza. Uh, wow. Quite a while singing and playing drums uh, yeah. uh, for a couple of years there. Gordon Lightfoot with his band and Gordon's song, Restless. And Gordon now joins me as we continue our, our conversation. How'd you get the young and the restless into that song? I mean, here we have this wonderful little thing. It's on a forlorn ballad, and in the middle of it pops the name of a daytime TV show. It, it, I, I just figure it's lucky every time anything like that happens. Yeah. That, may, that works, you know. Uh, the, the marriage of the, the words to the melody is, seems to be very important. And, and if you can get something like that, the young and the restless, and, and get it in there and have it work, that, that's just a lucky thing. Restlessness, as in drifting as well, has really been a part of the light foot we all sort of got to know over the years, although no, not really well. You've always been a hard guy to get to get close to but one senses that that's all over for you you're really a settled down guy now that you're comfortable with yourself in a way perhaps you weren't before is that fair yes i i, I think so uh the, the the times of the total immersion are, are past and, and the only way you can be total and totally immersed is, is just to ignore everything else that goes on in life so I like it a lot better now, since I've, I've, uh, I was married uh, again uh, uh, in 1989. It was my second marriage, and, and it seems to have, have worked out just fine. Yeah. Got new little kids and everything? Two new little kids. And uh, they keep, uh, you know, in, in many ways, they, they inspire me, like I say, in a roundabout way. They actually make you work. They, they make you work more uh, because you're better organized. You have to be better organized. Uh, to combine the family life and the, and the professional life as you, or, and the artistic life, as you can probably understand. 1989, you got remarried. Yeah. How long since you'd had a drink when that happened? That was, was it 82 you quit? 1982. Gone. Yeah, it was the year. Did you just quit? Uh, I, I had some help. I, yeah. I, I, I had to seek out some help, and I, I was able to get some help. and. Uh, and uh, get that one wrapped up because uh, I don't really think I'd be sitting here today if I had kept up at the rate I was going then. You look terrific. I was just looking at the camera close up of you singing. You look, I mean, you're not 19 anymore, okay. but you look, you're working out, you're fit. Do you want to arm wrestle or anything? <laughs> no. I, uh, you know, I, I want to do, I want to do the work well. Uh, in, in order to do the well, do the work well, I have to be fit. And you I, run I can't and be, you I can't be drinking. sweat and everything? I, I don't make a big deal out of it. I, I go a certain number of times, say, by the year, probably from, for the last few years, it's been from, say, 100 times, 110 times a year, and uh, to belong to a gym and, and go there when you're not on the road. And I'm not on the road that much because, really, we don't, we don't want to be on the road that, that much any more than we are. So we're playing 40 to 50 times a year. Uh, is quite adequate and allows us to uh, fulfill our family responsibilities and look after the ones who love us and be conscious of the fact that we're leaving them alone and we're going, going ahead and out on the road. But you behave yourself on the road. Absolutely. So you claim. Well, I believe you, Gordon. It, it couldn't be any, any other way because it's, it can't be hidden. The Bell's palsy that hit you, that was also the, right, right near the end of your bad drinking days, wasn't it? Was, was it, a... it was earlier on. Yeah. It was quite, quite a bit earlier. It was about 1970. That must have been real scary. Enough. Oh, I didn't know it gone back that far. My doctor was in the house that night. When uh, it hit? When it, when it hit, he spotted it from the, from the audience. So I was a pretty lucky guy there. He was able to get me on some medication very quickly. But then you kind of lost all the, the vitality of the left side, I can't remember, the left side of your face. It's like a stroke of sorts. And yeah. It put me out for, for three months, but I, I came back a lot sooner than anyone thought that I would, so. That'd be very scary. I, I, you know, I, I wasn't scared at all. I was just thinking about getting better, that, that's yeah. all. 
Yeah. But now, this is some, from something I read. You couldn't smile very well when you had the I still dance. can't. You can, so. And, and so when you, made your, when you had your incredible movie career, they properly cast you as a guy who didn't smile. Well, you were a bad guy in a Western. I, I was. I, 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 had, uh, I did that because the opportunity was, was given to me to do that. And, and for no other reason, I was curious to see what it was, how it would be working on a, on a movie set with a bunch of movie people. Yeah. Were you great? I was, it, was, it was a great experience. Were you great? A, no, I wasn't great. And it doesn't matter. If I was, I would have made more movies. I didn't <laughs> like what I saw. No. I, I did another one too after I'd, I'd lost weight and stopped drinking. I, I, I did a, a, an episode of a Hotel and I, I didn't like what I saw there either. So I said, well, forget about that's this. It. I'll, that's it. I'll do what the Lord meant me to do, and, that, and that's play the guitar and sing <laughs> and write songs. And... Let me come back in a couple of minutes and I'll do more of what the Lord made me to do. I have more song and conversation with Gordon Lightfoot. The painter passing through. That's a very autobiographical one as well. Yeah. Once you hear the lyrics, there are so many lyrics in there that it takes a little while. What about the thought of the, the song itself, the painter passing through? Because in some ways, that's who you are in a way of, of I mean, that's, we've, you've given us scenes and landscape from ourselves, if that's not too pretentious of, you, of, of me. You know, there, there, is so, there is so much, there, there is so much Canadian imagery in, in all, all of my songs and images that I can envision that I've seen of this country that it, it would be astounding, it would be absolutely astounding. Hundreds of, hundreds of them of natural settings that can come to mind, different ones uh, from this country, just from seeing it as the wilderness that it is. Which you sort of rediscovered in, in all the canoe trips. And I know how much you like talking about them, because you say that's the most boring thing there is to talk about somebody else's canoe trip. But you had to be there. I know. But they do, they supply imagery like, uh, and, and there's the wildlife too, and the animals too, that you, that you see along the way too. But you really, you got to be, be there. See, this is, I remember lamenting one June the 24th, I was watching the French television and was watching a hundred thousand Quebecois down on Ile Saint Hélène and all singing their songs, songs written by them about themselves. And I thought, we never do that. And then I thought, do we have the songs? I, yeah. I mean, I don't know a lot of people who can sing Canadian Railroad Trilogy from beginning to end, or the wreck of the Edmund Fitzgerald, but, but I've seen several thousand people doing early morning rain in the, in the prairie. I mean, I, I don't know what you think about that song. Maybe it's one of it, some... It, it, I it, think it's still fabulous. It, it's a fine song. But I've seen them singing it at the finale of a folk festival as part of us and, and 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 so much of what you've done when i was talking earlier quoting your own lines to yourself i live with someone who can recite you it's bloody awful i tell you <laughs> doesn't matter i mean i tell her about the ghost and the wishing well she gives me the rest of the song the uh -huh. whole thing and they're all there are thousands of people like that well, you know I, I, how how i affect people i i i, I don't know i I, I'm not really like, like uh, uh, jumping all over myself to, to talk about experiences like that, like, like, like things like, like where my music has helped uh, someone who's in is a desperate medical situation and they're only a child. Does that happen? Yes, it has happened. What song? Sort of thing. What song? Just, just send me more of the music. It's helping this child, a child in, in Egaluit. It's very sick. It's inherited a disease. Yeah, how it? Yeah, it yeah. How it? Yeah, that's nice. And they need more Lightfoot CDs to make this kid uh, either go to sleep or top, stop crying, one or the other. Hmm. So we get we get right on one like that, you know. And and other uh, th those are, are, are ways. 
that, that I, I hope it can help. I hope that, that people can, uh, other songwriters can learn to, uh, to play their music on an open guitar, for instance, without the use of a capo. And everything that I've, I've ever done, right, going all the way back to about 1963, it's all capoed because the best songs in my act are, are with the tuning bar on the guitar. Yeah. And I still play that way after all these years, and, and it, uh, it bothers me a lot that I, that I don't play open, like hmm. Neil and like Dylan and some of the other people. That's Neil, as in Neil Young, Neil Young and just, uh, just like helping us, the rest of us here. <laughs> At last count, I think 130 different people had recorded your songs. Is that possible? Not at the same time. I, I mean, everyone. Olivia yeah. Newton-John and Johnny Cash and I don't know who else. A lot of the recordings are, are, are fabulous, too. And I mean, I could, there, there again, uh, I don't talk about it a lot is because I, I have to leave people out when, when I do it. But I can tell you that, that Elvis, Elvis Presley's recording of, of Early Morning Rain is it's a sweet recording. It is just. A I sweet don't even. Recording. I didn't know he did that. Yes, he did that one. That yeah. would sell a copy too. <laughs> you, know, it's a, you know. And you never do anybody else's songs except you did me and Bobby McGee, which Chris Christopherson wrote, and then they didn't release it until somebody else had a hit or something. You're you're in the in the prox proximity of other songwriters as you go along, and quite often you'll you'll say, here, here's a. Yeah. Here's a tune, I'll, you know, uh, like the Christopherson tune, me and Bobby McGee, yeah. uh, from, from a, a guitar pull set, guitar pulling session in, in Nashville. Uh, Red Shame, my, my former guitar player, came yeah. to me and said, uh, Chris is having a guitar pulling down the hall at uh, room such and such, and, and he's, he plays me and Bobby McGee, and I have my record producer with me. And, and he says, Gord, let's get that song and let's, let's do it. And I say, well, I, I don't know. I mean, like, I, I want to do my own. Mm -hmm. And every once in a while, it happens that you do, you just do somebody else's tune. It just happens. Like Changes are on Susan's floor. Oh, there's another couple. Changes? Phil Changes, Oaks' is Phil song. Oaks. He wrote that in my house on Ward's Island, you know. Well, you and I must have been, a, been around about <laughs> the same weekend Everybody's because I... Everybody's got a story I, where Phil wrote, but he did write it, I think, in your kitchen table, didn't he? Yeah, I, I, lear I learned it from him while he was uh, playing at the old gate of Cleve on, uh, on Avenue Road, yeah. Come and sit by my... How does it go by? So come and sit by my... Sit by my side, come as close as the air, share in a memory of gray, and wander in my words, and dream about the pictures that I play. Of changes. And mercifully, I won't continue on. <laughs> I'll come back. We'll get the rest of Phil Oaks' song. I'll be back with Gordon Lightfoot. I am back for a final bit of conversation with Gordon Lightfoot in an hour that has whizzed by. Do you know you've contributed to the world of opera? No, I, uh, I was not aware of that. Richard Margison. Remember Richard? It's a wonderful tenor, but he made his early living singing Lightfoot songs in coffee houses. Yes, yes. Have, I, you, have, you, have you met him? Have you sung with him? Well, I, I, if, he's the, if he's the same guy I think I, I'm thinking of, but I'm, but I'm not sure. Yeah. I'm not sure. How come you don't sing Black Day in July anymore? Uh, it, 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 it served its... It served its, uh, it outlived its, its usefulness as a song. It, it just, I, I didn't want to sing it. I, it uh, uh, there, there are certain songs that you don't want to sing because uh, you just don't feel that you have any business singing them anymore. What about For Love and Me? Sometimes. That one's got some uh, validity. It's, it's good, it's a good one. Mm -hmm. We don't always do that one, but we, but we do it occasionally. Now, in your impetuous youth, did you one time take a sledgehammer to some early recordings or destroy some tapes or something? Did you? We destroyed some uh, some albums one time. Yeah, a whole, a whole dumpster full of them. What, what was the album? Well, they, uh, <laughs> I think it was it was a best of uh, uh, set that not. came out on the heels of one of my big albums. So we, we did indeed do that. We didn't want to uh, send them out in, in, uh, so, so they could be played by, by everybody down at the dump, I guess. 
Now you keep saying we as if you're like royalty or a band it's with a tape band, partner or something. Talk we I know, but you can't blame the band. No, I, I for talk about destroying your records. This is an enterprise. No, it was my, my business manager at the at the time and I that did that, did that job. Was that no, when your sister was band, your business my manager? My band didn't have anything to do with well, it. Well, then don't say we <laughs> destroyed it. Say I destroyed it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Massey Hall. Yeah. You might outlast it. It's that, only going to be, it's a perfect building, so like all the great buildings of Toronto, someone's going to take a bulldozer to it and put something else up. But they're not taking a bulldozer to you. But they've been saying that for years about Massey Hall, and it's, it still stands, and, and I haven't heard anything about it uh, being torn down lately. Maybe it's going to stay there for a while. <laughs> I'll keep playing there. That, that is the best, it's the best place for, for, for me to play. Yeah. And people bring their children and their grandchildren. And we're willing to accommodate and, we, and, 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 try, and try and show them something that they can, they can learn from or, or gain from. Now, I've refrained from this through all this, this delightful, to me anyway, chat with you. But when we're talking about other, you covering other, doing other people's work, when I started this art, I, re, I reminisced about Ian Tyson handing me early morning rain. Yeah. And I said, we were writing a song together, Ian and I. Mm -hmm. And I only read, as I read about you, that you'd recorded it. Mm -hmm. Song for Canada. Did you record that? No. But I know the song of what, of what you speak. Do you? Yeah. If I give you a dollar, will you record it? <laughs> did you, did you yeah, assist me and in, 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 in Song for Canada? Yeah, we're playing da, 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 That's da, it. Da, 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 That's it. I'll be a star. Thanks, Gordon. This is a real pleasure. I've been chatting, of course, with Gordon Lightfoot, and the new album is called A Painter.